the, the most important of those seven words are the first two. Calm down. Hi, I'm Sean Parman, producer of The Tom Ferry Show. In today's episode, Tom Ferry and Steve Harney discuss how to properly communicate the reality of the market, as well as brainstorming buyer marketing ideas. Enjoy. So let's, let's jump right into that, Steve, because look, we're 42 days into the new year. And you know, I think this morning I sent you uh, at least one or two emails because if you're reading the you know, Mortgage Wire, you're reading anything out there today, the sensationalism of the news would have the average consumer believing this is a horrible time to buy or sell. So Steve, we're 42 days into 2019. What say you? All right, well, first I say, remember that negative headlines get more clicks, negative headlines uh, create more buzz than positive headlines do. So very obviously there are a lot of people out there that are trying to lean on the negative. And I think that's gonna only get worse as we get closer to the election in 2020. So for the next 18 months, I think we're going to be bombarded with uh, negative headlines. The good news is they're not true, all right? And the bad news is we have the responsibility to make sure the public realizes they're not true. So there is a lot of negative news out there. What I tell agents very simply, I give them seven words. Calm down, sit down, think, plan, act. Those are the seven words. The, the most important of those seven words are the first two. Calm down. Yes. Everything is fine. If you get caught up in the craziness, if you get caught up in the psychology of this, then you're the person, the only person that's capable in your marketplace of making sure that it is not impacted by panic. All right. If you're panicked, they're going to be panicked. And what I think that normally happens in a market like that's changing, and this market's changing for the good, I'll tell you that in a second, but in a market that's changing, Sometimes that, cons- that uncertainty causes concern, the concern can, can cause doubt, the doubt causes fear, and the fear then can create panic. And if we get anywhere near the fear of panic stages of this, we have a challenge. So let's talk about agents. Agents right now are panicked. Oh my God, there's so many listings come to the market. There's price breaks, prices are starting to level off. There's like, well, Steve, what are we gonna do? This is horrible, look what... And I, I say, wait, wait, hold, hold on a second. Last year, this exact time, February 2018, I'm out in front of agents. You know what every agent's telling me? See, there's no listings to sell. We're going into the spring buyer's market. We got nothing to sell. How are we going to do any sales if we don't have anything to sell? And look at prices. They're going through the roof. We're heading for another crash, Steve. If these prices keep on going up, we're going to be another crash just like 2008. We have to somehow get the prices down. All right? And, it, and so now they had prayer vigils. I attended some of them. Praying to the real estate gods that please give us more inventory and please make sure that prices start to just balance out some and level off some. That's what everyone was praying for a year ago. Yep. The gods answered our prayers. And now we're panicking because we got exactly what we wanted. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going into a normal, uh, normalized market. Everyone calm down. Sales this year are going to be better than they were last year. I think they're going to be a lot better. But the people who uh, forecast them say they're going to be better than last year. Prices are not going to crash. As a matter of fact, we're going to end 2019 with still an appreciation level higher than what the historic norms are. Now, is it going to be 6, 8, 12%? No. Thank God it's not going to be that. We're going to get down into that. This year, we're going to be somewhere between 45 and 5%. And then next year, we're going to get down to normal numbers, somewhere in the mid threes. But there's nothing wrong with that. What that means is we're heading toward a more normal market where we can sell houses and the houses we can sell, people can afford to buy. So Steve, you, you just shared, so if, if everyone listening just took that advice and just took a breather and stopped complaining about the number of price reductions they're seeing, prices are falling. I'm like, no, overpriced listings are actually now being corrected to the reality of the market. Everyone watching knows what I'm talking about. But I think that the bigger, the bigger insight you gave, um, and I, I think I mentioned this last week on stage, a personal client of mine who I just hung up with and said, 
So, and I'm not going to say his name, but you could, you could guess he's number, I think, he's in the top 15 in the world for Keller Williams as an agent. Okay. When I first started chatting with him, he's like, Tom, I haven't talked to you in three weeks. You have no idea what's going on. In my area right now, doom, gloom, fear, misery, doom, gloom, fear, misery. And he had all these examples. And I finally stopped him and said, how is your business? He said, oh, I'm having the best January of my life. <laughs> right? But, but we get so caught up in, in this, the, the, the hyperbole of headline readings, water cooler conversations about agents in a state of panic that don't sell any houses anyway. Now, I know, I know we're going to get into this because I, I really want you to drive home with everyone watching today the five points you just shared with our elite. I wrote down, what advice do you have for our listeners to get the word out, especially to the 25 to 35-year-olds right? That are out there reading the same headlines everyone else is and thinking maybe now is not the time to buy. So, so what advice do you have for everyone watching to get the word out to that segment of the market? I will tell you it is our moral imperative to get out and help people understand how important homeownership is to them, their families, their communities, their neighborhoods, and the entire country. All right. So now I've shifted my thinking on that and said, no, you know what? I'm going to take this as kind of like a little bit of electric shock in the rear end. I'm going to get moving on this. So I know that at KCM, we're putting a whole bunch of um, resources together and we're taking all of the data that's been there and all of the research that's been done, both on the financial and non-financial um, benefits of homeownership. And we're going to make all that information available to realtors across the country because we have to now become missionaries to the value. We ran a, a stretch that people wanted to buy a house simply because they made money at it. They bought a house and then, you know, five years later it was worth 30, 40% more than what it was worth when they bought it. But there's so many other reasons. The financial reasons still there, but there's a whole bunch of other reasons that home ownership is important to them and to their communities. And we're going to gather that information. We're going to catalog that information. We're going to get it out to them. Right now, they have to take on that missionary zeal. They have a lot of the information just already in their head. Just today, I had somebody in LinkedIn uh, in, in answer to the, this guy that said homelessness was important. He gave a heartfelt message to me, and he put it you know, public, saying, Steve, I heard when he, he was working in the back of the room. He wasn't even an attendee at the speech. And I heard what you said, and it gave me the courage to go out and purchase a home, and thank God I did. I went from being a millennial being in debt to being in a much better position financially and all the other benefits. He said that speech changed my life from a financial basis. And he thanked me for it. Now, the point of the matter is we have a million realtors. If we each went out and gave that speech, and if you're not like, don't want to get a group of people together, let's do a one-on-one. -on -one. And we sit down and we talk about how important homeownership is to them then I think that, you know, whatever one, you know, social media guru tweets out uh, one time is going to mean nothing. We, we have an army of missionaries that have to spread the word, the, the true word. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a strategy in three tactics or, you know, just some combination of it, Steve, that I want your feedback on it. Ready? So I'm, I'm putting you on the spot here. The first thing I wrote down, if I was an agent watching this and... And I truly believe in the value of home ownership, not just the fact that I'm a licensed real estate professional or I do mortgages or I'm part of the title and escrow and insurance industry, but like I, I know my own story and I know the story of so many of my clients. What I would challenge you on is I wrote down, start creating content, right? Video specifically called my first home. So think about this, Steve. What if, what if they actually took the time to slow down to document the journey of the next first time buyer that they work with, right? From tell me what sites you were on, what was the trigger, at what point did you say we could do it, but when did you start first saving, right? And we're interviewing, we're getting the backstory, right? And, and then why did anybody else in your home own a home? Are you the first person in your family to own a home? To get all of that story, right? And I don't care if it's just little sound bites, but then I wrote down, if you documented the client's journey from the decision, right? To get to start to save, to correct their credit, to do all things they have to do from their online search 
to the, you know, figuring out mortgages, to finding an agent, you, to home shopping, to selecting, to offers to close. That experience that they would document could create so much viral content that they would be seen as not the realtor just trying to sell the house, but someone that is truly doing what so many of our friends are watching right now do, they're trying to help people, right? They see their job as that person that I am here to help you, whether buying or not, right? That's not the factor. Can I help you get your credit repaired? Can I help you make the, the right decision? Can I talk you out of a bad home and help you make the right decision, right? Maybe at a lower price. So I think that would be awesome. I would remind Ooh, all of you. It's brilliant. One of the things I was most embarrassed about when I was an agent, because I helped a lot of people get into their first home. One of the things I was embarrassed, I might be in a supermarket and a, a couple would walk up to me and say, Steve, thank you very much. You know, we moved into our house five years ago. We now have two kids. If it wasn't for you, we would have been. And I couldn't even remember the person. Yeah. I couldn't remember their name. Here was this person I changed or helped them change their own lives. And here I am saying, oh my God, trying to remember which house it was in. That is a brilliant strategy in so many ways. The only thing is I get the, the buyer involved in that with you. Of course. No, no, no. I'm yeah, only thinking film, film the buyer. Only from the buyer's perspective. Show me what sites you were looking at. What criteria? What buttons did you hit? Right? Because you're, you're showing the next wave of buyers. This is how someone that did it, did it. And this is, this is someone that maybe... Again, I use the example of like, maybe it's, maybe it's the single young woman who's buying her first home, who's a second generation immigrant, who's coming into this country, her parents never dreamed of owning a home, and now she's in a position to do so. Like that kind of heartfelt truth about the American dream of home ownership would just be bananas. So that's my first part. But I want to remind you guys, YouTube is the second most searched site on the planet right now. YouTube. No one though is searching for like, find an agent. Instead, they're searching like, how do I buy my first house? How do I you know, do my credit repair? How much can I afford? What are the best features to own in a home? And, and what I would remind everybody is, this is just a little tactic, that if you're not going into Google AdWords and looking for what are the keyword searches that potential home buyers are looking for in your area and building content with that as the subject title, right? Building just micro pieces of content, just answering those questions. If you did that, my friends, you would kill it. So that's number one. And we give you a super easy one. Number two, when you sell a home to someone who is 28, 32, et cetera, throw a rager for them at their house. You pay for everything, invite all of their friends because you're the bridge to all of their friends' dreams of home ownership. Like, you know, half their friends are going to be like, oh my God, if these two were able to buy a house, the rest of us got a shot, <laughs> right? I mean, that's what all my friends said when I bought my first house. Like, well, if this guy can do it, anybody can. And then the third one I would tell you is um, client testimonials on video at the end of the day, and then boosting that out. And a little, you know, like, if you don't know the questions to ask, Steve, I interviewed my dear friend, Ken Carey, who is the infomercial guru of all time. And it's on a Tom Ferry show. If you just Google it, you'll see. He says, these are the five questions you have to ask to basically get them to really express the benefit of the experience and get those testimonials and boost them like crazy. So those are my three. Steve, any, any thoughts on those? The, the only thing that, uh, first of all, they were all brilliant. I really, really like all of them. I'm going to share them with you know, the people I know in, in the industry. Uh, the only thing that I might change a little bit, but this is my age, you're going to call them a, a rage. And I guess for the young kids, that's the case. If you sell something to an older guy like me, call it a housewarming party. Exactly. Uh, just because they'll say, oh, rage? I don't want anybody raging in my house. Just <laughs> teasing, just teasing you. I think they're brilliant ideas. Anything that we can do right now to promote the importance. Like we all know, being in the business, we know that look on a homeowner's face when they first get the keys at the table. We know that look. We know that look at the first night they spend in the house. We know that we have to now get that look, that feel, that heartfelt, I don't know what to call it, and we got to get that on film, and we got to get that out there. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. But please let us know down below how you are going to be helping by sharing and spreading the positive news and which ideas you yourself are going to be implementing to be helping your business and your buyers. Thanks so much. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. And remember, as always, your strategy matters and your passion rules. Peace.